Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I'm going to install the cylinder heads on this 5.7 liter uh, Mercruiser V8. Um, I don't have the camshaft installed yet because I run into a little problem, which I'm going to resolve later. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I normally don't put the cylinder heads on until I button up the front and then get the oil pan on the bottom, get all the bottom, uh, the uh, the oil pump and everything on the bottom, the oil pan on and all that kind of stuff. But um, since I'm uh, missing a part, I'm going to do this out of sequence. So I'm now going to install the cylinder head on the port side of the engine. The, if this was a car, it would be the driver's side. And um, so I'm going to, first thing I do is uh, get a rag and wipe down this. Uh, well, first I'm going to tilt this thing up to where the, the cylinder is almost perfectly straight up and down, vertical. I won't go completely vertical because I don't want oil on this side to spill out of the cylinder. But um, I'm going to go almost vertical. And then we'll take acetone and a rag and wipe the surface down and get it absolutely clean with no oil stains or no oil smears or nothing. So you want this surface here to be uh, squeaky clean before you put the head gasket on. Once I get it cleaned up with acetone, I'll set the head gasket on it and then I'll set the head on it. And uh, these heads are 5.7 liter Vortec heads. They're supposed to be the best uh, cast iron heads for a small black Chevrolet that you can buy. I have now cleaned the uh, cylinder head deck surface off with acetone. Got all the oil smeared. You, want, you don't want to feel any oil smearing or any smudges or slickness at all on this surface right here. You want to absolutely clean. Also, you want to make sure that you have a dowel here and a dowel there. And that's to align the cylinder head on this uh, on the cylinder. A little speck of dirt out there. So, um, all right, I'm now about to uh, set the, the uh, head gasket on and I'll show you what that part number is right now. All right, the uh, part number for a Marine, this is a Felpro Marine head gasket, and the part number is 17030 for the 5.7. For the uh, 5.0, it's 17020, and for the 6 liter, the 4.3 liter, 4.3 liter V6, it's 17010. So this is a 5.7 head gasket. I'm now gonna lay it on the block, uh, put it on the dowel pins in preparation for the installation of the cylinder head on the uh, port side of the engine. All right, I almost forgot something. There's another plug that goes right here in this hole right there. It's a quarter inch pipe plug and um, I'm going to install it right now. I almost missed that. As I was installing this head gasket, I noticed it was about to cover that hole up and I remembered that there's a needs a plug in there. So I'm going to go get a pipe plug and uh, put the uh, Permatex Aviation Seal on it and put it in now. All right, the plug is now in and now I'm going to proceed with um, installing this head gasket. So. The head gasket is on the dowel over here. There's a triangular shaped hole there to that dowel. I just snapped on. And then this one over here goes on here. So the head gasket's now on and it's located by the dowels here and here. And now it's ready to uh, lay the cylinder head on top and put the bolts on. All right, I've just unbagged this Vortec uh, V8 head, V8 uh, 5.7 liter Vortec V8 cylinder head. I took it out of the bag, and even though it's uh, cleaned by the machine shop, you can see there's still there's a, a small hair right there, and some dust in the combustion chamber. And there's dust all over the surface, so I'm going to have to clean this head, uh, wash it off with a. What I do is I use shout and stuff is pretty good at getting cut in grease light grease anyway uh, pretty good at heavy grease too but i just use it because it can rinse away i don't i think it's biodegradable compared to that gunk uh, compared to gunk cleaner so i'm gonna spray this down with shout and give it a good washing and blow dry and dry it off with an air gun okay this is a uh, 5.7 liter vortex cylinder head it's been washed with a shout uh, basically laundry spot remover um and then i uh uh, doused it with water, washed it off with a jet stream of water, and then I blow dried it with my uh, air compressor, and then I uh, spot dried it with a towel. So it's now clean and dry, and it's uh, ready to be put on the uh, engine. So you can tell a Vortec, a 5.7 Vortec, because it has this kind of a heart-shaped uh, combustion chamber there. Uh, the 5.0 doesn't have that heart shape. It just has a line coming straight across here uh, for, between the two valves. So that's how you can tell the difference between a 5.7 and a 5.0 Vortex cylinder head. The uh, 5.0 is a, a narrower or smaller bore, so it doesn't have the room to put these uh, heart, shape, heart shapes in there. So this is a genuine Vortex head. It's about to go on a 5.7 Mercruiser V8. 
All right, the cylinder head is now placed on the block and uh, it's located on the dowels that are on in the uh, cylinder head I showed you a while ago. So uh, it, if it doesn't sit flush down on the surface like this, um, it's not on the dial, so you gotta make sure it's sitting flush. So this time I'm gonna uh, put the bolts in. There's, a, I think, eight bolts along the bottom here and then some more up in here. But uh, I've got a brand new set of, uh, brand new box of bolts I'm gonna put in right now. Okay, I'm about to install the cylinder head bolts. They're a brand new box. Uh, the part number is ES72856 by Felpro. And um, these are what's called uh, torque to yield bolts. They're for one time use. So you can only put them in one time. Once you tighten them up one time, they're, they take them loose, they're no, no longer any good. So I'm about to put the bolts in the holes now, and then uh, I'll uh, show you how to torque them. So there's eight, eight, eight short bolts that go out here on the perimeter. One's one, there's one medium length bolt that goes right here and right here on the ends, two of those. And then the rest of them are long bolts and they go here, here, there, there, th there, there, and there. So. About to drop these bolts in the hole and then uh, show you how to torque them. Also, I put a drop of oil on the threads and on the, underneath the head uh, just to make the torquing easier. Okay, I've now put the long bolts in the holes where they go and I just want to make a correction. So, the, the, I don't put oil on the threads. They already have a sealant on them. So, that's your lubricant right there. I do put one drop of oil underneath the uh, head of the bolt for, to help it uh, tighten down. And I do that with a uh, syringe, that syringe right there. It allows me to administer one small drop of oil without shooting it all over the place, without overdoing it. So that oil can's hard to control with the drops of oil. That, that syringe right there, I can deliver a tiny drop and as much as I want. So now, now that these bolts are installed, I'm gonna install the medium length bolts and then the short bolts using the same, I'm putting a drop of oil under the head. And I believe all of them have the seal on them, so there's no need to put oil on the threads. All right, at this time, all the bolts are in the holes and I'm now about to torque them down. So you, you torque these bolts in, in two phases, two stages. The first stage is 22 foot pounds for all bolts everywhere. So I've got my torque wrench set for 22 foot pounds. Uh, I can't read this thing, but anyway, it's an old torque wrench, but it's set for, trust me, it's set for 22 foot pounds. And I'm about to torque all the bolts down evenly to 22 foot pounds. Then on the second pass, for the long bolts, you go 75 degrees past where they are, and I'll best use what's called an angle torque meter. This device here, so the, the, this stop right here keeps the uh, the uh, uh, the degree uh, dial from turning, and this needle moves against that, so you'd move it how many degrees you're supposed to move it. So the long bolts go 75 degrees, the medium length bolts on the ends go 65 degrees, and the short bolts go 55 degrees. So you don't use a torque wrench to torque them to a certain torque, you turn them a certain angle. And I won't go into the science behind why they do that, but it's supposed to, you're supposed to get a more consistent torque and clamp, or clamping force for the cylinder head. So, all right, so I'm about to torque these bolts down to 22 foot-pounds and then go through the sequence of torque angle. So let me tell you the sequence. So there, you have to do this in a certain sequence. You go in a pattern. So you start here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Why well, don't torque these bolts in that pattern? And I'll tell you the pattern again as I do it. So. Um, or I'll do it. I'll tell you the pattern again when I torque them down to the degree. So I'm about to do the 22 foot pounds in the first stage now. Um, one thing you want to do is you want to have a system where you you don't want to get interu interrupted in doing this. If you skip a bolt and don't tighten it, you're gonna you won't have, your cylinder head won't seal and you'll have to do this rebuild over again, or at least you'll have to do the cylinder head over again. So that's a major major undertaking. So you need to make sure you have a system for making sure you have every bolt done. So you either Put a piece of paper on the wall and put a mark by do one and then put a check mark. Do something to have a process so you make sure you get every bolt. Um, I've never missed one yet, but I've taken the engine apart so I, cause I, and then I think they did miss one because the bolt was loose. So um, just have, a, have your system, a pattern to put these, to do these bolts in the right order. And also try not try to do this all at one time and don't get interrupted. Don't do half of them and then come back and do it over because you might forget which one you were doing unless you write it and I'm very good at writing things down. 
So I'm about to torque these bolts down to 22 foot pounds, and then I'll show you the uh, when I'm done with that, I'll show you how to do the second stage. All right, I'm about to torque the number one bolt to 75 degrees, and um, as you can see, the stop is on zero, and I'll turn it till it hits 75 degrees. So I'm going to do that now, and uh, I'm just I'm not going to show all these. I've done other videos where I've showed how this does how this works, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do all 17 bolts in this process. Again, 75 for the long, 65 for the medium, and 55 for the short. I'm now about to uh, tighten or install the bolts and tighten down the cylinder head on the starboard side of this engine. And uh, one thing I want to point out is the head bolts came with instructions and they say, um, if bolts have a sealant pre-applied to the threads and underside of bolt head, simply install the bolts. Additional sealant or oil is not required. So I kind of knew about the sealant on the threads. I wasn't putting oil on threads, but I did not know about the oil under the head. So I'll have to check that out. So that means you just put the bolts in and tighten them now without actually putting oil on them. That's good news because um, when I put oil underneath the head, sometimes it drib dribbles off here and, it, and the paint won't stick because it won't stick to oil. So it means I don't have to clean up any oil anymore. So that's good to know. Um, one other thing, um, the instructions on this cylinder head say, excuse me, on this uh, head gasket, say to, uh, Wait 10 minutes following the torquing procedure, loosen each bolt one at a time, and retorque the specifications. Um, you do not want to do that with the torque yield bolts. Once you torque the bolt down, it's torque to stay. Um, it says this will provide even clamping of the gasket and reduces the chance of improperly torqued bolts. Uh, I guess they're calling you an idiot for not uh, following the right procedure or, or talk, torquing all the bolts. But the bottom line is that with torque yield bolts, you don't, once you tighten them down one time, you don't ever loosen them again. They stay torqued down forever because they're ruined if you, once you loosen them up, they're not, not to be reused. So looking at the instructions, they say that, well, the sealing on the threads is obvious. You can see it, but I never really paid attention. But if you look carefully, you can see there's a line of either lubricant or sealing or something underneath the head of this bolt. I never knew that. I didn't, it, the color was so... It looks so close to the bolt color, I never really noticed that. But it's got something on there that's a coating to allow it to uh, be torqued down easy. So that's good to know. I will never, I won't have to put oil on these heads anymore, or under these bolt heads anymore. All right, I'm going to finish uh, torquing all the bolts down. And uh, I'm not going to show this head because I showed the last silver head. And uh, I'll just show the results when it's done. And as soon as I get this, uh, this silver head done, I'm going to take this, tape up the engine to seal it up and then start painting. All right, in this engine, I now have both cylinder heads installed and torqued down. And uh, normally I would stop the video here and, and do the valve train as a separate video, but this went so fast, I think I'll just include it. So one of the things that helped me a lot on this, uh, speed this rebuild up was um, the uh, I, I took all the rods, excuse me, all the push rods, the lifters, and these lifter retainer uh, little bars here off the engine back when I first got it and just bagged them all up in a bag to keep dirt and dust off of them. And uh, I didn't wipe them down. I just took, they were, they were, the oil was still good on the part. So um, there was nothing wrong with the oil in this engine. I mean, not this engine, but the customer's engine, he had gotten water into his exhaust port somehow that, and he got into the cylinder and rusted up the cylinders. So, but internally where the oil was, there was nothing wrong with it. So these lifters and everything still cut oil. So I just bagged them up in a bag, all the push rods, the lifters, the retainers, everything. And as I took them out of this bag, they were still in clean shape. I didn't have to, there was no dirt on them or anything. So I just put them in the bag and, and put them back in this engine. And normally, um, with a different kind of cam, you would ba individually bag each lifter and, and all the accessories with that lifter. But on a roller cam, you don't have to do that. You can put any lifter back on any load of the cam because they don't spin and they don't, they, uh, since they're constantly rolling, they don't form a wear, wear pattern. So um, bottom line is that this, valve train went back in much faster um make a few comments so this is the v8 version of the valve train and these are your retainers these keep the the uh, lifters from spinning see the flats on the lifter there so this this device here keeps the, those lifters from spinning they ride up and up and down inside this part but it doesn't allow them to spin this is made of steel it's much it's much more robust than the plastic retainer of the vortec v6 I like this design much better. I wish I'd done it on the set, the V6 also. Um, and then there's a a metal spider that bolts down here, here, and here, and it has metal fingers that go over and hold these down so they don't rise up or so they don't pop up. So that's pretty simple design, but it works. It's a really good design. I like it. So 
At this time, I'm going to put the spider on, and then I'm going to put the uh, the rocker arms and, and assemble the top of the valve train. And uh, I'll probably go ahead and adjust the valves, and uh, I'll do a separate video for that because it'll be uh, make this video too long. But anyway, just wanted to show you that the valve train is now almost installed, and it's going pretty fast. So this is going to wrap up this video about installing the cylinder heads on a 5.7 Mercury V8. And uh, stay tuned for the uh, installation of the accessories on this engine after I paint it. For now, I'm going to tape it up and paint it. Again, if you found my videos helpful or beneficial or entertaining, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot. Thank you.